My name is Engineer Lulu Omoshu. I'm a software developer and uh, I represent a company that handles uh, e-governance solution. So we are here to present we have to present a biometric fingerprint attendance system that will solve the problem of ghost workers in Bayelsa State. It will be able to cater for a lot of lapses in, the, in how salary is calculated. So using the technology of biometric fingerprint, we'll be able to know who comes to work, when and how. And at the end of the month, we'll be able to get a complete salary calculation without cheating anyone. So in this case, government will not be cheated, individuals will not be cheated. At the end of the month, payments will be made quickly into the bank. And uh, we have a solution that will handle all this, and it's 100% made in Nigeria. So since we are the ones that know our problem, we are the ones that will design a system that will solve the problem. We can't uh, wait for the white people to come here. They don't know our problem. Our problem is unique. So that is why how we come in. And uh, by God's grace, we believe we'll be able to tackle the problem and solve it permanently. That is for local government system. That is for local government system. Thank so you. Covering all the eight local governments. Thank you. I quickly direct that salaries should be paid to the banks. So if salaries are being delayed, it's not from the ministry, it is, it is from the banks. And several times we have called the banks to question why the delay. So your salaries being delayed is not from the ministry. When once we charge, the first thing we do is to send salaries, first of all, before any other thing. So if your salaries are being delayed, it is from the bank, not from the ministry. So this biometric system does not have anything to do with the fact or the tax system, my brother. Thank you very much. Hey lady, where is that lady, okay? Your name, your local government, so maybe your council. Question? Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Mrs. Bosnia my question is, since the machine, that they are going to take samples of our blood for the DNA, I want to ask if the machine can tell the age, those that are supposed to be retired are still working, or minors, those that are not up to 18 and are still working, are working. That's my question. And the DNA detects the age of the staff. Over age, under age. Thank you. Sorry, I think you misunderstood what uh, was being said. Nobody is taking your blood sample. Hmm? But when you log in, automatically, or when we get your uh, fingerprints, automatically your DNA will be taken by the machine. But nobody is taking your blood sample. The thing is, in the questionnaire that we've given to you, you'll be asked if uh, what is your blood sample. But some of those things we may even eliminate from the system because it's not too uh, important for this stage. What we are concerned with actually is your logging in and your logging out, and to ensure that you are the person doing it. Okay, we are taking from this belt, taking one from this belt. In as much as the system is very effective, I want to advise flexibility in the sense that somebody may leave his office for a workshop for one week, thereby shortening his attendance by five days in the month. And within the month, you may log in in the morning and go out for field duty, but the duty is so elaborate, maybe because of distance, you may not be able to come back to meet up the closing time. So that let it not be marked that the person came in and sneak away and did not log out. Therefore, it constitutes an offense. Secondly, I also want to bring information from my chairman. That since the coming into being of this commission, the union has written to the commission for discussion. 
and separately it has not attended to. Now that the Commission remembered the medical health done and invited us for these talks, we advise that we should be considered to discuss on other issues that affect the local government system. Thank you, sir. Very important. your question is in two parts. The first one is if you are going for an assignment, an official assignment outside your duty post for five days, say so what happens? I'm sure before you do that, you must have uh, permission. Uh, look, uh, uh, Chairman Local Government Service Commission, I'm sure they must permit you to go for that assignment. And once you are permitted, you know, we should know we should know that you are going for a special uh, assignment for five days. Then we will put it in and then you will not, those days will not be uh, counted against you because you are actually working. The other aspect of your question is um, the type of duty you are keeping. Maybe you log in in the morning and then uh, you went out for some duties and then because of the elaborate nature of the duty or assign assignment you are doing, you are not able to come back to you know, log out. We are saying that such people, right from the beginning, we are going to take care of them. You know, if you are a medical worker and we know that your times are not, you know, steady, it's not from 8 to uh, maybe 4 or 3.30, then we know such people as uh, um, very special people and we categorize them differently, right from the beginning, from the onset. So that we know that you may not be able, you may be able to log in sometimes and at other times, May not be able to log out. We we categorize or categorize all that. We are taking that into consideration. But don't think you can use that as a, a pretext to just uh, um, do what you want. The system will not allow you. The mandate of the union to appreciate uh, this wonderful initiative. As a union, uh, we have never once shied away from enjoying our our members. And to go to work, we always tell them everybody should go to work. And that is what every responsible trade union should be doing. And that is what we have been doing. And but beyond that, as good as this initiative is, we want to say that there are certain things that the union will want to plead with and the government to do. If you go to work in a situation where there is inadequate office space, I mean office accommodation, you just go, you log in, you just sit down there doing nothing, there are no uh, office uh, desks, the chairs are not there, no working materials, I mean adequate accommodation, office accommodation. Are they there? Those are some of the fundamental questions that are begging uh, for answers. And apart from that, if you go in 8 o'clock, what is the guarantee? I know that in some of the councils we have over 1,500, 1,800 workers. You are talking about within a period of two hours for this you know, exercise to be concluded. What is the possibility that within the two hours this you know, can be concluded? If a worker is unable to uh, log in within that period. What what is the, uh, the, the what are the consultants going to do about that? And then apart from that, the local government workforce, particularly the junior cadre, over sixty percent or seventy percent of the junior cadre is largely um, their infantries. Those the security guards, the ferrymen, the cleaners, and the rest of them. You know the program is a little bit elitist in nature. What is a provision there to take care of the plight of, of this category of workers. Thank you very much. Comrades, go on, Toriyoyi. Uh, who is answering the question?
Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade Gowan. I know that you are a general and you ask a question like a general. But you're going to have the answers from me. Now, your number one question was uh, office accommodation. And before you talked about the office accommodation, you commended the program and you said the union is not against you know, uh, members not going to work because you must work to earn your living. Please put your hands together for him for that acknowledgement. <laughs> now, having said that, office accommodation or no office accommodation does not necessarily mean that you should not report to your place of work. There are office accommodations. Let me tell you something. More often than not, the local government areas, when the chairmen are not around, nobody goes there. Nobody goes to work if the chairmen are not there. Does it mean there are no accommodations there? There are accommodations. But it is because of the orientation we have, we don't want to go to work. The local government system is a welfare package. That is the mindset of the local government workers. And that is what we are trying to checkmate. If you want to talk about office accommodation, there are accommodations for people to work there. Have I not been to all the local government areas? I have. If you want to talk about the IPAs, that is one other matter that it is in my own agenda to see that their secretaries have been completed when once we have approval from the, 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 the governor. But for the eight local government areas, there are office accommodations. It's just that our people don't want to go to work. And if you don't go to work, you will not earn your salary. Now, if there are no office accommodations, why is it that people who went for biometrics in a Keremo led by uh, Elder Okorotie, when after the biometrics, as they were going back, people came down to do biometrics, we are dragging the same boat with them. Are there no office accommodations there? I thank God that we have a, a one time, a past, you know, executive chairman of the local government area, a uh, uh, honorable uh, uh, Robin Sinitolo. He built a very fine, uh, in, you know, office space, but nobody goes there. So the story about office accommodation or no office accommodation will not hold water here. It is all about our mindset. It's all about reorientating the local government workers. Thank you very much for that. Now, the second one is about the plight of the junior cadre workers who are illiterate or not illiterate. It does not take anything. In those days, even my mother does not know how to write. She can go to the bank, turn print, and take her money. So such people, the, 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 the consultants and uh, principal officers in the local government will be there to identify them. Ah, Mama Bebo Pomo, Pomoda. The next day, and as the consultants are there, those of you who are local government workers are understanding them to take over the system from them. So I don't think there will be any plight anywhere. It is only that we have, we have to start because the only permanent thing in life is change. And philosophy has taught us that even that change changes within itself. And this is the time for the bias and local government workers to change for the better, to change for service delivery. Thank you very much, and God bless us really good. Um, thank you. You also talked.